Folks, uh, one of my readings over the weekend talked about this week being hell week for Wall Street. We got to talk about jobs, inflation, base effect, seasonality adjustments, all kinds of craziness. We had a 10-year over four. Now it's under four. A lot of stuff going on. I want to catch up with Taylor from Life Goal Investments and just talk about the week we have and the month that we've been gone. So Taylor, what's going on? How you doing? Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, if if you don't mind, what I'll do is I'll try to collapse some data into you know a snippet, if you will. So Please. if you look back, January came off of December's reports. December's reports came in and, and basically looked like inflation was going to be pretty modest, pretty sanguine. We had it under control. And then what happened was the market ran both stocks and bonds, bonds, the yields compressed, driving prices up, stocks went higher based on this lower inflationary narrative that we were going to be able to avoid a recession and cause a soft landing. That's the mm -hmm. term. Then what happens is January data comes out second week of March. Or I'm sorry, January comes out second week of February and you have CPI come out hot. Mm -hmm. You have that's that's consumer. You have producer inflation come out hot. You have jobs numbers come out white way hot, hot. way white hot. hot they were expected that to be positive 185,000 for the month of january they came in at 517 a triple basically and then you also had retail sales retail sales were expected to come in at 1.9 they came at positive 3% showing that people are still out there spending yeah. in the economy and then all of a sudden everyone went back up the well, truck I, the, I think there's not. one one more you forgot go ahead, which go ahead, is go ahead the one that I keep telling people is the most important PCE core. P PCE yep. core not only came in hotter than expected, but unfortunately broke the trend. Correct. Went higher. Right. Even though CPI and PPI came in hot, they still had a trend, right? When you look at the chart, it Correct. was still down. PCE Correct. core. Can't say that. Yeah. It went from six, two to six, four, I want to say six, two yeah. in December. To, yeah. So it was up. to your point, the direction, the shift in the change. Rate of change was, was the most important. And that's what the fed tells us they're looking at most overtly. So anyway, yeah. whichever one of those reports you want to look at was Bad. a train smashing into yeah. inflation being more significant than what we expected. Yeah. And it, that that's kind of where we're at. So let me shut up there. You know, you, you yeah. did a perfect job correcting me. <clears throat> yeah. So it didn't correct added. Uh, added the yeah. last thing I want to, I want to highlight is on this channel, I've been highlighting for folks <laughs> correctly. So that inflation has three components. We have already seen goods disinflation. That story is about over. The supply chain stuff. A yeah. Lot of it, supply, yeah. It, that's the easy, that's what I call the cardboard boxes for a simple analogy. Yep. Then we have housing. Housing is delayed. I keep telling people we can hope for August and September, right? I fear that the data coming up this month will still be hotter than it was last month. I think we still are on that trend, unfortunately. Yep. And then we have the really, really hard services, wages, whatever you want to call it. So again, I think the drop from nine, one to six, Six four, whatever the last CPI was, is the easy. We're about to enter the hard. And dude, we won't even get to the very hard till next year. Inflation is going to be a problem, at least through 24. And now people are talking 25. So pay attention. And, and folks. What's, your, what's your thoughts? What's your thoughts? End of the year, 4%. Is that is that over well, under which, which which CPI? Yeah, yeah. PPI? So, so yeah, just because everyone talks about CPI, we'll point to that one just because it's the easiest one and everyone recognizes it the most. So it sits at six four, yeah. I think, right now, four percent. Can we can we shave another two point four percent off of it between now and the end of the year? I think that that's, um, yeah. I'll so that, that's I, if you gave me four percent CPI headline December read, so reports in January. I mean, I want to be very yep. clear so I get all my bases yep. covered. You always do this to me, by the way. This is just- Yeah, no, I like it. I'm going to go, <laughs> I'll, I'll take the under. It's, it's barely though. It's like three, nine, because this is how I got there. We're at six, four. I believe there's two to 2.2% of CPI headline that's housing. I believe by the end of December, hence January report, that's out of the system. Yep. Yep. But it's tough. I mean, I could easily see, I think four is like the perfect number, right? The over, that's a perfect number. Four, five, easy to take the under. Four, yep. I'm barely, because I think we, I think we're at, I think we're above three, five into the summer of next year. 
Yikes. Yeah. So, so to your, to your credit, looking backwards now, this consumer has continued to clock along extremely well because the jobs information has been so strong. So there's been no unemployment. There's been a white hot jobs market. People have been able to dictate their wages. Now, real wages are now coming in, but Mm -hmm. for a long time, they were keeping up with a really, really hot inflationary number. So that showed Mm -hmm. that people still had the purchasing power. You now have credit card debt that is going up immensely. So I I just looked at the numbers on this credit uh, consumer credit is reported tomorrow Last month in January, it was 11.6 billion is what we added to consumer credit. This month, it's expected to be 25 billion. So it's like people are still spending. At some point, this consumer can't continue to spend the way we have been spending. And it's tough because like it's, there certainly is the inflationary component where some people legitimately can't afford to live their life right now without putting it on a credit card. But for the month of January, the largest increase in spending we saw as a percentage basis was at bars and restaurants. Yeah. That's not people that can't afford to do yeah. anything. That is people Agreed. spending what they don't have unnecessarily. So I, I, I really feel bad when people you know, bucket everything as people are just spending willy nilly because there certainly is that group of people that aren't doing that. They've pinched every penny they can. They're like, shit, I can't keep up anymore. I have to put this on a credit card to live. But there's this also massive component on the other side where people just got used to getting stimulus checks and being able to spend above their means because the government was subsidizing it. Now that's gone. Yeah. Here's a, here's a controversial take. If you really want to beat inflation, start student loan debt repayments. That is a very, very interesting point because someone brought this up to me the other day and they said, what happens to the stock market when student loan repayments restart? And I sat back and I said, I honestly have not thought about that at all. And that is a very, very interesting question because in January, it was the number one largest influx of retail investment that we've ever seen 1.5 billion dollars a day so no one is anymore arguing that retail can't have an effect on the market when numbers like that come in that's a it record a, little, a day it, it, it was about 30 percent of trading so yeah. no one's to say 30 percent isn't a significantly a statistically significant yeah, it's number. not three it's, it's 30 right and how much of that gets reduced if that student loan repayment yeah. gets reissued it's a really good point michael yeah, I mean, again, if you're serious about it, then simply restart student loan. Well, yeah, yeah, so, it's so it's, no, a, it's no. a stimmy check every month. It's a stimmy check every freaking month. It, it just is. is. It is. But look at this, though. So when you say, are they serious about it? What, what states in my head there is monetary policy. That's Powell and the Fed. This is fiscal policy. So this oh, is the but- yeah, totally, you're absolutely right. The, the, uh, Government, just as a broad brush, doesn't yep. want to do it because it'll cost votes. Election season's coming back up. Yeah, exactly. What are you kidding me? I can't. I can't do that. I'll lose votes. We're basically yeah. in election season right now for the next eighteen months. Yeah. Yeah, but again, that's that's. So let's talk about other things that just kind of get, the base effect. One of the reasons I took the under on four percent again, January yep. report on December, is the next. So I, the next three months, I believe, are very large base effect changes, right? The, the, when you look back, there were just large jumps. And yep. as this happens, they roll off every 12 months, right? You roll off the oldest number. So I, I think, again, one guy's educated guess is uh, CPI headline comes down. I'm going to call it 661 from 64. Uh, I got a buddy who's actually calling 59, which I think is aggressive. But a lot of that's because gas rolled over a little bit and then the base effect that rolls off. Well, what do you think about base effect and all of that? There's what the heck is going on there? Sorry. Um, there's also another contributor that I think is going to start to spill through into the market, which is a really good leading economic indicator and good news for the market on food prices is that fertilizer rolled over yeah. four or five months ago. And that's about a six month leading economic indicator into food prices and food prices have been an obnoxious, yeah. naggy, naggy, you know, and, and just really bad news for the consumer at the end of the day, from an affordability Agreed. standpoint, 
ability to feed your family. So um, that is something that's going to roll off here soon too, is that fertilizer effect is going to bleed through into actual food and crops, um, et cetera, to cause it to come down. So I think you're in the ballpark. So we were at 6'4 on CPI. Am I right there? So, yeah, so. Um, do you know what expectation is at this point? I haven't seen an expectation yet, but I got to imagine it's six one six two. Yeah, yeah. I uh, and I I have been overly aggressive on it coming in. I'm actually yeah, gonna have. take. I'm I'm gonna take. And in the last month, I did too. I'm gonna take the over on it. Unfortunately, okay. um, right. I think that all of the data that we've seen as of just recently here is showing that inflation is stickier than than the market continues to think. And yeah, and, it's it's just higher for longer is happening. Right, higher for longer. This, uh, yeah, but like so, so on top of that, this week here, I'm just gonna uh, pull something up. I think you can still see me right now, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. So this week is an incredibly important, just from an economic standpoint. So tomorrow you have the consumer credit report that we talked about. Yep. Tomorrow you also have Fed Chairman Jay Powell speaking to the Senate. Yeah, that'll be interesting. And then he does again Wednesday. Yeah. Then he does again to the to the House on Wednesday. Jolt's report, job opening yeah. report, which is a really That's good crazy. leading economic indicators Wednesday. That That's basically, and we've talked about this in the past, this is a really good leading economic indicator of what's going on um, from a job standpoint, because Jolt's essentially tells you how willing someone is to quit and how many open jobs are outstanding to fill on the back end once they quit. So yeah, I guess numerically, we're still about 1.9 openings per job seeker, which is unheard of numbers. Yep. Then we have jobless claims on Thursday, and then we have the ever important employment report that comes on Friday. This is well, a, let's play with that one. A, so I think expectations on that I just saw this morning are two hundred thousand. Yep. So well, I saw two hundred eight. So call okay. some, call two hundred four. So, halfway point. Okay. Two hundred four. Very good. Yep. So what are you going to take? The over or the under? I have to take the over. I I Me really too. hope it's the under. Um, but at at five seven. Do you think we get a January on, um adjustment? So. I don't even know if I want to go down this rabbit hole, but Barron's had a phenomenal article this weekend. Every number that we see is seasonally adjusted. And I, they, I they read this that. article. Yeah, You read this article? Know. So yeah, do we want to go? Sense. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll do it. Out of, the so, cat's out of the bag at this point, yeah. Yeah, so I, I actually talked about it on my daily financial news this morning. So again, part of the seasonal adjustment, again, this is from memory, and they'll all be round numbers. Historically speaking, we have lost 3 million jobs Correct. in January from December. Correct. Okay. Seems about right. Holiday season, all that makes perfect sense. Well, this year, folks, we only lost 2.5 million. Again, round numbers. So bingo, bingo. Magically, we have a $500,000 positive adjustment, seasonal adjustment, which made up like, I don't know, 90% of this 578 number, right? We still grew jobs, but it would have been a horrible miss if right. not for this adjustment. Correct. So. Again, uh, that's a bullshit number. January. Yeah, I, I I derailed this there. I shouldn't have done that. But yeah, it, so I guess to the to the gap of standards that we were talking about in the last episode, yeah, the generally it, kind of it's 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 fair, yeah. but it's not right. Right, right. We got to be able to see through this. But I, I guess in that light, though, numbers would be like this. And, oh, yeah. and they would be all over the place. They would be really tough to, so they smooth the numbers and it's all a relative game to what we do normally in January. Yeah. Th this is why I think, yeah. It's, so again, I understand the game. It's decades of this and, but dude, sometimes the numbers are just dirty. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. a dirty number. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. no, I, I got to take the over on it just because again, when you look at, when you look at January's number being so outsized on the upside, it's tough to say that we go back to perfectly in line with trend. Why would all of that hiring be chunked down after the holidays and yeah. then dissipate immediately? It just doesn't make a ton of sense to me from that standpoint. Yeah. The other thing we're seeing, at least in the Silicon Valley, right? We've had all these high level job layoffs, right? Which again, yep. are 1% of the economy, but they get, they get the headlines. Yep. We, and again, I, I say this as somebody whose home is like the center of the Valley. Right. And I have friends that work at all these places. Uh, we've seen record um, uh, company creations. There are people creating AI companies with, you know, two founders and five engineers. So yeah. all of these, not all of them, but a lot of these layoffs are being very quickly absorbed into the next great technology, which now these are extremely small companies currently, uh, but they're getting some very seed funding, you know, 500K, a million bucks, seed rounds. Again, at current valuations, you actually heard talk of this with Jason Kalkanis 
in the all in podcast. He, I think he just put in 500 grand for 10% of a company. A lot of that stuff is spinning up. AI is the next hot thing. They're calling it web plus mobile AI, the next thing. So, you know, all these layoffs in the valleys, these huge severance packages, they're stepping into new jobs. Obviously the package is less, but they're not on the street with signs. It's, it's interesting to see. It's interesting to see these new waves of the hot area of the market. AI is, is I keep saying white, white hot. hot. It, it white is white hot. hot right now, right? Meta was, you know, a flash in the pan. Web three was a flash in the pan. Like some of them hit and when they hit, they are outsized returns, but it's almost like venture capital type investing, buying oh, yeah. into the AI thought process. Because again, this could be something that dissipates and isn't meaningful, or it could be the next internet, right? That, and that's yeah. the way they, they sell it. So, um, well, yeah, the other thing that's going to happen. Yeah. The, well, let's just be very clear. This would be like the, this is like search engines. I don't know if you're old enough to remember Ask Jeeves and Excite and all these others. Dog right? pile, there was yeah. a time, yeah, there was a time where Google and, you know, whatever the other one, Yahoo, weren't the only two. Um, I think AI is a thing. Uh, there will be a winner in, in a second place, as there likely will be. But what's going to happen today is there'll be thousands of companies created. Correct. And that's absorbing and engineering talent and funded, right? So yep. engineering talent, product marketing. Sales, it's all being absorbed, or not all of it, but a lot of it. So I think that's another shocker for the Silicon Valley. So again, a lot of stuff going on. This is going to be a very interesting week. We actually start with the jobs numbers on Wednesday, not only jolts, but we get ADP. You want to Correct. educate folks on ADP versus the all-important economic bureau? I'm um, not sure I'm going to be able to give a, a great breakdown of that. I know ADP is just a subset of the broader private. population. It's, it's private. It's, it's just it's, private. Okay. okay, gotcha. There you go. Yeah, so ADP is private. Uh, ADP, it's very interesting. The la About a year ago, I was ripping ADP's report because they were just always off. They actually took two or three months off to reevaluate their models. And they've actually been relatively close uh, the last two months. So ADP will be interesting. For example, I think last month, expectations were 113. And they came in at like 180, which is a 30% miss compared to the other one, which is a, a triple. So they're close. So again, the numbers start Wednesday. It's going to be very interesting. Um, the 10 year while I was gone was anchored at three and a half when I left. Now it's anchored at four. Talk about that. Cause that had to impact the bond market. Oh, it waxed the bond market. It really did. Um, so the bond market took it on the chin and, and, and what was interesting is like, this is the weird dichotomy that's playing out right now. I think the retail buyer is, is propping up tech right now is, is my take on what's going on because the bond market usually trades directionally with tech stocks because techs are incredibly interest rate sensitive. And so you had the bond market get absolutely decimated because of higher interest rates, which is the inverse relationship that takes place there. And yet- Oh my tech God, stocks, NASDAQ's up 1.2 today. Yeah. Percent. Wow, the, yeah, I hadn't the, checked. Well, you, well, you're also getting though a bond market rally today. So this one I can I can wrap my head around of. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Right. You're, you're, getting, you're getting bond yields coming down. Um, but yeah, it, it's while bond, bond yields rallied, causing you know bond prices to get absolutely trenched, or that's not the right word, absolutely whacked, you had the NASDAQ simultaneously rallying, which didn't make a ton yeah. of sense, which tells me yes. that might be the retail buyer causing a dead cat bouncer. But I guess at the end of the day, what you have now is the market actually hit that kind of point of resistance of four, it broke through four, got to like 407, 408 yep. on the 10 yep. year. And now it's come back through and is at 394 or somewhere in that ballpark. It was on a breakneck pace, yeah. the 10 year going higher. And it, it had to take a breather. And it looks like it's taking a breather here. Yeah, it's going to be a wild week. I think coming out of this, you know, Friday afternoon, because the jobs number is Friday morning, um, it could be a very different picture, right? If the job number comes in, at expectation or below, maybe have a slight adjustment to January. Well, so, so the thing is, this jobs number is you want the jobs number to come in on the screws as an investor. You want it to come in at, if the yeah. expectation is 204. You want it to come in at 204 yeah. because if it comes in much under that, people are going to say, watch out, recession's coming. Yeah. And there's, therefore, the stock market's going to whack. If it comes in way ahead of that, like it did in January, people are going to say, oh shit, Ooh, inflation's out of control. Ripple. Watch out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so you want it to be pretty darn close to that 204 number as an yeah. investment. What I would love, and again, just wishful thinking, is um, I would love a January adjustment, maybe down 100K. I'm just going to put totally it out agree. there. The market would love and, that too. For that yo, matter. the market would love it. Um, I'd love a beat. You know, if the number's 204 in this example, maybe a 212, 220, you know, 
um, I, something like I, that. I, I would like it on the other side, honestly. I would I okay. would like it to come in a little bit light. I think the market would stabilize on some lighter data right now because what you have, and it's tough to say that. I want less people to have jobs added. Like I have these really are additive time. jobs, so it's not like you're asking. Yeah, so fair, fair, yeah. But um, I, I guess that's going to take the, the, the Fed's back is against the wall. Oh, right the, now. Yeah, the sh- the champagne game. bottle is very shaken up. They're they're trying oh to hold gosh, the top. Oh my gosh, yeah, off. that cork, hold it in, hold it in. Every bit of economic data we got for the month of January, hot, hot, the back hot. of the Fed against the wall and said higher rates, higher rates. Yeah. So I would like this number to come in light personally. Um, you know, call it a 180, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would be- agree. That's what I would like that. Yeah, I, I agree. I wanted to call, I wanted to every jobs number for the last 6 months has been hot. We got to break that trend. That's yeah. what the Fed's trying to do. That's and yeah, exactly. they're, not, they're not hiding it. They're saying no, they're this not. is what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what do you what do you think? Um, do you think there's a chance of a fifty basis point? Yeah. No, I don't. I, I, maybe if Friday's number comes in ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they would have to. Yeah. If listen, the, their number one goal right now, because they don't have to worry about unemployment, unemployment or you yeah, know, 3.4%. Yeah. Full employment, employment, they, don't, Check. they don't give a damn about that right now. So yeah. their only goal is to control inflation. Now they want to control inflation without causing that number to skyrocket. But if, mm. but if employment adds another 500,000 jobs, I wouldn't be shocked if they went 50 at that point, but I don't think that they, they have no. 50 in their, in their holster right now. Yeah, what, I, what I've told my audience is I think they're going to talk 50. They're going to talk tough. Voting, non-voting members are going to say 50, 50, 50. Because, again, that's that's part of their yeah. charm. Yep, totally agree. But they're going, to, they're going to Bernanke us for the rest of the year. 25, 25, 25. Yep. That's just what's going to happen. I, I, I totally agree. And that's what the market's telling them to do. Whether the market's right or not, who knows. But they, they definitely listen to that drumbeat as much as they say they don't. Yeah. So, Taylor, you have an amazing TikTok and Instagram feed. What is it so people can follow you from one rental at a time? Yep. We're at life goal investments. And so it's at life goal investments, plural. And I say that because we've got a lot of fake accounts right now that are oh, crypto scamming people. So just be careful at life goal investments. You'll see my ugly mug on there. Yeah, Investments that is with an S at the end of it, folks. Correct. Thank you so much.